Welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technology Video Training. In this edition, we'll show you how to set up a ProSoft Technology PLX31 Profinet device to Modbus Serial Gateway to connect Modbus over serial devices to Profinet controllers. The PLX31 PND MBS emulates a Profinet slave device, allowing a Profinet enabled Siemens controller or General Electric controller to communicate with devices on a Modbus serial network. If you would like to know more about Modbus basics, including Modbus addressing, you can check out our video, Understanding Modbus. The PLX31 offers fast, consistent data transfer, as well as diagnostic data so that when things go wrong, you'll have the data you need right there in your controller tags. In this video, we'll configure the gateway to allow an S7 Profinet controller to read and write a 32-bit floating point value to a power monitor on a Modbus serial network. Here are the database addresses that I'll be using, as well as the IP and node addresses of the devices we'll be communicating with. The video will cover assigning the gateway an IP address, configuring the gateway in ProSoft Configuration Builder, We'll map in some status data for the Modbus commands, and we'll set up the gateway as a Modbus client and add some master commands. Let's begin. First, we'll open up ProSoft Configuration Builder, or PCB for short. Right-click on the new module in the tree view and select Choose Module Type. In the product line filter, select PLX30, and from the drop down menu, choose the PLX31 PND MBS, or as in my case, the MBS4, and click OK. So now we'll assign an IP address for the gateway, expand the PLX31 PND MBS, and go down to Ethernet configuration. Right click and choose Configure. We'll change the IP address. In my case, I'm going to change it to 10.1.2. You obviously will want to use an IP address on your subnet. Also, we can change the net mask and gateway. And once this is done, click OK. Even though the module has a default IP address that's not on our subnet, we can still download to it by giving it a temporary IP address using our ProSoft Discovery service. Right click on the module. Choose Download from PC to Device, and once this opens, choose Browse Devices. In the new window, you'll see your PND MBS gateway along with any other gateways on the network. Right click on it and choose Assign Temporary IP. Type in the address you entered earlier, since we know this address is available. For me, it's 10.1.2.242. Now make sure that the IP address is in the Ethernet field and choose Download to permanently set the IP address. With that done, we can configure the Profinet portion of the gateway. The first section, PND, is configuring the Profinet device port, and the second, PND module map, is configuring how much data will be exchanged between the module and the Profinet controller. We'll also map in some status data that will alert the controller if communication with the Modbus devices are lost. Begin by clicking on PND. Here you can see the input and output for the byte offset inside our database. Essentially, we're selecting the size of the input and output sections for our internal database and where we want them to begin. A byte is half a word, so the input byte offset of 4000 is word 2000, matching up to our MBS output of 2000, and the output of 0 matches our MBS input of 0. Also, if you have to correct any byte swapping for the entire Profinet network, you can do so here. I don't need to, so I'll leave all of this default. Next, click on PND Module Map. Right click and choose Configure. We'll add a row and then edit that row. And here is where we will host and receive specific amounts of data for the Profinet controller. Let's say a Profinet controller needs to send us four bytes of data and receive four bytes of data. 
Simply click on module in slot and from the drop down list choose input four bytes. Now, since we're going to be sending status data to the PLC as well, I'll select input eight bytes to accommodate that data. If you notice your bytes or words are scrambled, you might need to swap bytes or words for this particular device or data type. We can do that by using the swap code here. Once completed, click OK. Now we'll add a second row and edit that row, this time for output four bytes, and click OK, and click OK again to close the window. To map in that status data that I referred to earlier, we just need to expand common net, then double click on data map. Add a row and edit the row. The only status I'm concerned with is the state of the Modbus connections. So we'll map in from address 4410 to address 1250 with a length of two. 4410 is the start of the command error list for Modbus commands on port one. And 1250 is a spot in our database that can be read by the Profinet controller. By giving it a length of two, this will let us know the status of the first two commands on port one. Now we can move on to configure the MBS port. Expand MBS port one under PLX 31 PND MBS, right click on port one and select configure. And when the edit window opens, we can see all the configuration options available for our MBS port. First, we'll have to enable the port. And here is the RS interface. We'll go with RS 45 for this application. The type will be a master and protocol will be RTU. Our baud rate will be 9600, parity none, data bits eight, stop bits one. You just need to make sure that all of these settings match those of your Modbus network. We'll leave response time out at 1000. This is in millisecond increments, so this is one second. We'll set retry count to zero so that if it misses a command, it won't retry it. It'll just grab it on the next queue. And once everything is set, we can click OK. Now that the port is configured, we can configure the port one command. We'll build one read command and one write command for our master. So add a row and edit the row. We'll begin with the write command. Set enable to continuous because we want the command to pull continuously. Internal address will be 2000, which is the beginning of the write section of our internal database on the Modbus side. For register count, we'll grab two words of data to accommodate a 32-bit floating point value. Node address will be four. This is the slave address of the power monitor we're communicating with. Function code will be 16 to write multiple words. Modbus address in device will be the address in the power monitor that I want to write to, which is 40,202. The power monitor uses standard Modbus addressing. All holding registers will be located in the 40,001 address range. Our gateway uses zero based addressing. We'll just enter 201. And now we can click OK. We'll create a read command. So we'll add another row and edit that row. Set the command to run continuously as well. Internal database will be zero. Two words for register count. Node address will be four again. Function code will be three to read multiple words. Address in device will be 224 and click OK. What all this means is that with our write command, we'll be taking 32 bits of data starting at output word zero of our S7 controller, moving it into address 2000 of our internal database, and then pushing it into address 40,202 of our power monitor. We'll be reading the data at address 40,225 of the power monitor, 
and we'll bring it into address zero in the gateways database where it can then be read into input word zero of the S7 watch table. Our status data will be at internal address 1250 and can be read into the S7 input data as well. This completes adding a command to Modbus port one. If there were any other devices we wanted to read and write data to on the same Modbus network, we could just keep adding commands to this port and address them to those devices. If you have a four port gateway, you would simply repeat this process for each additional port that you want to use. Now that the ports on both the Modbus RTU network and the Profinet network are configured, we can download the configuration to the gateway. Right click on the module's name and choose download from PC to device. On the download screen, confirm that the IP address that we assigned the gateway is in the address field and click download. And that's all there is to it. If you have any questions or would like more information about the PLX31 PND MBS, use this link to go to our product page or feel free to visit our website. Until next time, happy training.